All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Beretta 9mm USA here. Today we have the Smith & Wesson E-Series engraved pistol that we're bringing out against the Dan Wesson Specialist. That versus video is coming next. The Dan Weston Specialist. Missed your last round. <laughs> yeah. So my my initial impressions are that the Dan Weston has a slightly better trigger. All right, we're safe. Um, so it's got a, some initial creep to it there until it firms up. Yeah, one more time. Creep. So this gun has a better break, but you were telling me the reset is a little bit stronger on the Smith & Wesson. Yeah, and it has a, the Smith & Wesson has a little bit better feel for the reset too. Yeah. So pulling the trigger on the Dan Wesson is a little bit better, a little bit more crisp. The reset on the E-Series engraved is better. Also, the recoil impulse on the E-Series engraved is a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer, a little bit lighter than the Dan Wesson Specialist. And that's because it's got a full length guide rod. So this has the GI style. This is a traditional style 1911 other than of course, your tactical operator rail right there. Right. <laughs> so the weight on them, I think, is very close to identical, but they are slightly different. Just something I noticed in the first couple of magazines. Yep. And obviously, you guys, this gun is a little bit more expensive, and it's more feature-filled. Yeah. The texturing is a little more rough, um, aggressive on the Dan Wesson over my particular Smith & Wesson E-Series engraved. Because I picked up E-Series before, and they were very aggressive. Yeah, and actually too aggressive. Yeah. The um, grips, I'm sorry, the grip panels here are more aggressive than the wood ones that are on the E-Series engraved. Yeah, these are some uh, VZ grips. And also regarding features, this has a uh, full-size ambidextrous safety on both sides. And this does have the uh, Magwell, one-piece uh, mainspring Magwell, and it's fantastic. It is. I'll show you guys what the Smith & Wesson E-Series looks like in a minute, but uh, this is really well done. Here is a quick look at the safety on both sides. Very well done here on the Dan Wesson. And another benefit of the Dan Wessons is no MIM parts, all forged. Right, and the E-Series only has a safety for righties. Yeah, and it's not as... It's not as tight, it's not as positive as the Dan Wesson. Yeah, this is really nice. So you're getting a few more options and a little bit of a better build with the Dan Wesson, but you're paying for that about $500, roughly? 500 to 700 Five depending to 700 on the model. More. Now, of course, if you don't go with the Specialist, but you go with like the Valor or uh, the V-Bob or something like that, it is gonna be a little bit less expensive because this is Dan Wesson's top of the line 1911 that they offer. They're most expensive. Is it more expensive than the Valor? Yeah. I kind of like to get a Valor maybe next year or the year after just to have one. Yeah. So here is the Smith & Wesson engraved E-Series 1911. Very nice wood grips, pretty nice engraving. Now, something that we haven't covered yet is this is a Series 70 1911. Beretta Sr. and I both thought that Smith & Wesson only made Series 80 1911s like Sig Sauer. That's not true. This 1911 and I think also the Performance Center top of the line 1911 from Smith & Wesson are both uh, Series 70 pistols. This one is for sure. I gotta say, you guys, this is the nicest Smith & Wesson 1911 I've ever seen or held. Uh, it's got serrations on the rear of the slide to reduce glare next to the rear sight. And you've also got serrations on the top of the slide to reduce glare. And of course, you've got your M&P style fish scale 
on the front and rear of the slide. Of course, you got your 20 lines or 25 lines per inch check ring. Check ring on the back strap. It's just a very well made 1911 considering the price of around $1,000. I would definitely buy this over a six hour 1911 because mm. of the price and the quality levels in this 1911. This also has uh, Smith & Wesson's heavy duty extractor. Yeah. And that's it. what I think uh, they use on their Series 70 1911s because and that's the only way that we could tell the difference between this one and your old one. Yeah, and it's on the uh, Performance Center. Yeah, the top of the line too. Performance Center. So that's why we're assuming that the uh, top of the line Performance Center one is going to be a Series 70. Uh, here's the Smith & Wesson 1911 magazine. Let's try this out. First rounds out of this pistol for me. Right, this definitely has less recoil than the Dan Wesson. It feels like it just comes right back into the hand. Most likely because of the modified guide rod system on this. That's the only reason I can think. What about you? That makes sense to me. Sail those two right over the top. No problems at all as far as reliability. It's running really good and it's built really well. You know, no loose slide tolerances or anything like that. It's as tight as the Dan Wesson Specialist. Barrel is fit pretty well on the slide. Not a whole lot of movement at all compared to your old Smith & Wesson. Right. It's just a very nice 1911. All right, so the Dan Wesson Specialist. Sort of jerked a couple rounds with it. Uh, that mag didn't want to fall free. Cobra Mag, seven rounder. The E series engraved. Absolutely gorgeous, guys, to look at. A very accurate 1911 by Smith & Wesson. No issues, no malfunctions, just shot like a dream. We shot it against the Dan Wesson Specialist in this Versus video, and I think the E-Series from Smith & Wesson held its own. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Beretta 9mm USA, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.